Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Monday live stream. So we got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. Just like the title and thumbnail suggests, we're going to take a look at just how important or how much actual space meme coins are actually taking up. And I was taking a look at just the total market cap, and it kind of blew me away with what's happening. And we can see that, uh, of course, with the market itself, we've been kind of oscillating around the 2.6, 2.7 trillion market cap. We've been pretty stagnant. Now, Bitcoin is on a tear today. As some people will say, wow, it's a 2.5% up. But we've been hovering around like 69,000 for a month or so. So it's like uh, not big news. It's just something that is uh, positive. And uh, we'll see if it plays out to maybe go to 73 or 75, like some people are predicting this week. But uh, it's anybody's guess, quite honestly. But what I wanted to go over was the habits, the habits and the things that we're investing into and what that means generally for everybody in the market and what it actually means for you. If we can take a look at coin market cap, or excuse me, coin gecko, and we can see trending, you can see that the top, out of the top three that are trending are meme coins, Habibi from Solana and Sad Hamster, whatever the heck that is. And then the largest gainers are GME, Sad Hamster, my neighbor Alice, I don't believe that's actually a game. So that's uh, not a count, but I mean, GME, as far as a meme coin, 158%. Actually, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the view more and see top gainers and top losers. All right. GME said hamster, Habibi, nine heroes is different. Resistance dog, Boomer. Hey, I should get into that coin. Toshi, dog and me, keyboard cat base. I mean, you can just kind of see where we're going here. Pepe Fork. And it's meme coins. Look, I got nothing against meme coins. I got nothing against people gambling, but just realize what this actually means. And when I took a look at it, if you go into categories and into CoinGecko, you can break everything down by the top categories as far as the crypto and assets, layer one, smart contracts, alleged SEC security, stable coins. And if we go down to number 11, we'll see this one called meme or all memes put together. And if we come over, take a look here, the market cap, this piece right here, for all memes are 64,794,261,958. And as far as volume goes in the last 24 hours, that's 5,483,550,969. I want you to remember this number, $64 billion. That's the market cap right now of all memes. Think about this. And we're taking a look at, of course, if we go for like volume real quick, if I wanted to sort this by the top volume in all of crypto, did you know that memes right now are one, two, three, four, five, they're number six. They're number six for 24 hour volume. Now, Bitcoin itself is around 25 billion in volume. If we take a look at meme coins again, 5 billion in volume. What does that mean? I don't need this one. It means that the 64, 65 billion roughly of uh, meme coins, that is the entire or almost the entire market cap of all ETFs. And that would be in America. And that would also be globally. So ETFs, that's 1,032,000 Bitcoin is worth 71 billion, 316 million, 337,337. So between 65, which is what all memes are, and the spot market for ETFs in the entire world is pretty much equal. So what does that mean for that? That just means that as people get into more into memes, people will ask me like, when, when's altcoin season gonna start? When's altcoin season gonna start? Well, for some of you, it started already. Like if you purchased specific ones, I'm a big uh, believer in diversity. But as far as like for us to get back to like the altcoins that maybe you had purchased previously and myself, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon as far as people rotating into meme coins and gambling. Now, look, you can gamble all you want to. I uh, have no problems. I used to live in Vegas for two years. But just know that meme coins right now, it is a zero sum game. There's going to be some, some winners and there's going to be a ton of losers out there. And that's really all I can really tell you. And of course, it's up to you. I'm not your dad. Not, I can't give you financial advice. But just know that some of the reasons why these altcoins aren't going up is because people are getting more and more into altcoins, or excuse me, into meme coins. They're gambling a little bit more. And again, 64, 65 billion, that's quite a market cap 
for the majority of meme coins, which do absolutely nothing. So that's what's happening. And uh, that's what we're going to be for quite some time. And we'll see how it all plays out. But the real question is, okay, that's where we're at. But is there other reasons why there's a little stagnation in the market? This is an article from Cointelegraph, and they pretty much laid out two possible reasons. I'm sick and tired of hearing about Mt. Gox, but I've been hearing about, about this since 2017, so why not? Apparently, just recently, the, there was a movement of 141,686 Bitcoin by the bankrupt Japanese exchange Mt. Gox on May 28th. Indicates an eminent asset distribution to its creditors ahead of the scheduled deadline on October 31st. So wait for this to happen. You to understand people are gonna take profits on that one. If I had my Bitcoin you know, tied up in that, some people will. Some people will hold on to it. They'll borrow against it if they can ever figure out the right way to do that, and they'll go from there. So that is one reason. That's 9.4 billion worth of Bitcoin is owned to, owed to all these Mt. Gox uh, recipients who got screwed over. And then also there's another big issue, which is regulatory uncertainty about uh, as far as anti-crypto. And you can't get any more anti-crypto than Elizabeth Warren. So there's a problem with the SEC. There's a problem with the bills being vetoed. There's a problem with Congress you know, trying to pass these laws into, or these bills into law. But there's only so much that we can do. So I always say, pick your spots, pick your battles. And we just did uh, a video yesterday about Elizabeth Warren. And if you want to, if you think that she's great for Massachusetts and she's, I mean, she has got these great positions, then go ahead and vote for her. I don't care what you do. But if you don't, if you think to yourself, you know, maybe Elizabeth Warren, maybe some of her policies are not the greatest and maybe she's not really great for crypto, hint, she's not. Then we talked about John Deaton and why he can actually beat her. So there's a link in the description as far as like why he actually can. I was under the assumption that Massachusetts was heavily democratic and that is true for senators, but not for Republicans. We took a look at also all of his different uh, issues and where he stands on these things as far as poverty and class warfare, immigration, inflation, debt, transparency, veterans, all the things that you would probably wanna know about John if you wanna to contribute to his campaign. Links in the description, you can go that route. So we have that and you're like, well, that's great, Rob. That's what's going on now. Where are we going? No one's got a crystal ball, but I'd like to remind everybody where we're at currently to potentially where we're actually going. This is coinmarketcap.com, historical, the historical records. And I find this interesting. The historical snapshot, I had, because it goes by week. So this is 7th of June. Today we're looking at, is it 3rd of June? Yeah, 3rd of June, 2024. So everything's in four-year cycles. I just want you to remember this, that Bitcoin, Four years ago, in the four-year cycles, the price was $9,758. But coincidentally, I, I found this quite odd, actually. There are some things that line up. The volume is $25,015,250,845. That's the volume four years ago. Do you know what the volume is today on Bitcoin? No, that's a good question. Let's, take, let's bring it up. Bitcoin, 24 hour volume, 21 billion, 875 million, 644,164. It's actually 4 billion less four years later. Again, you could decipher that for whatever you think it actually is. But those are the prices uh, as far as like with Bitcoin. Remember Ethereum? Ethereum four years ago was $245. Now we're looking at around 4,000. Tether was Tether. XRP was 20 cents. I think today it's like double that maybe, 40 cents. Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, sure, sure, sure. Binance Coin was only 17 bucks. EOS was $2.81. I think it's a little bit more than today. Cardano was only 8 cents. I think today it's like 50 cents, somewhere around there. And everything is pretty much appreciated. Even Chain, I mean, Chain Link, I own some of that as well. Except for Stella, I think it's doing that well. So just remember that as time goes on, you know, just to kind of take a peek back about where we actually were. And that would lead me to where we're going. And I want you to take a listen to this because we just talked about ETFs and we talk about where things are, but this was a pretty good piece. This is about uh, a minute long. This is David Krause, and he is one of the professors at the state of Wisconsin. 
And he's talking to a local news station about the, the Wisconsin Investment Board and why they bought 168 million of the spot Bitcoin ETF for, of course, their massive portfolio. Remember, this is the state of Wisconsin here in the United States. When I took it, when I listened to this, I'm like, oh, this is why we're going to get more states into it. And this is why we're going to get more countries into it and also more sovereign funds. And it makes a lot of sense. So just take a listen to this. It's about a minute long. Let me make sure you can actually hear this perfectly. And away we go. There we are. I ask you, um, what does your expertise tell you about whether this is a good investment for the pension fund? Well, it's, it's a good investment in the sense that it's going to add diversification. Mm -hmm. uh, the objective of a portfolio manager or a fund is to maximize return while minimizing risk. Bitcoin, like other alternative investments, does not move in parallel with stocks and bonds. So therefore, it adds nice diversification effect. The potential upside returns are high, like as it could be with any new technology. Mm -hmm. And finally, because this is a currency with a limited supply, it actually can serve as an inflation hedge. And I don't think very many people talk about the potential for it to remove volatility of government actions. Do you expect other states to follow suit, watch this closely and follow? Oh, I do. I do. Now, I don't expect those that are underfunded right. can afford to do that because this is a long play. I mean, the state of Wisconsin can afford to go through maybe several cycles. I think the long term trend of this type of assets is going to be upward slope. May I ask you. So there you go. So you take a look at that and we watched that and there was a pretty great reasoning as to why different states, probably different nations, sovereign funds will probably get into Bitcoin, as we've all known this for quite some time, but people are discovering it. So the question you have to ask yourself now is this, do I wanna get into something like this? Do I wanna get into something where there's smart contracts and there's DeFi aspects to it and there's different things that actually have real world function or do I want to just start to gamble and get into Pepe coin and Elon and things like that? You can do both. I'm just saying that it's just one of those things where you have to start to decide. And we as participants in this market have to start to talk to ourselves and say, where do we want this market to go? Where does this, where should this actually be? And what should we actually be investing into for long-term growth? And that would lead to the last one. Hmm. Ah. Cycles. So with Cycles, this was actually from, uh, I stole this from Shamath, actually on his All In podcast. And it talks about different cycles, cycle one through four, and the halving date and how things appreciate. And I know that people were, for you have been here for a long time. You understand that with after a cycle, things don't really just magically jump up. It takes time like everything else. And what he did was he took a look at his cycle one, two, and three. And cycle one, you can see, is in this like purple. Cycle two is in black and cycle three is in blue. Cycle four, when he put this out, what hadn't even occurred. But I just put this in as far as like the dates. 2012 was the first halving. Cycle two, the halving was 2016, 2020, 2024. And here was the prices. Again, 1250 back then, 638, 8400, and of course, 64,000 on the cycle four halving date, which was April 20th, 2024. And just take a look at this. For the first month after the halving, so for us, that would be uh, May 20th, right around now, nothing really appreciates that much. 1.0x on the first cycle, 1.15, 1.14. It's not too much. But then as time picks up, and I think it really comes down to just what the professor from Wisconsin was talking about. People start to realize what Bitcoin actually is. They think it's a good hedge against inflation. It's a good idea to put that into your investment portfolio because it is uncorrelated to other types of assets. And it's a pretty good, pretty good spot that you could have for a diversified portfolio. So as people sort of figure this out, and of course there's half of that supply, then you start to see price appreciation. 2.45, 1.3 in six months, it's a 10X or a one or a one, depending on the different cycles. Now the first cycle obviously was massive. Second cycle was still pretty damn big. 
And then, of course, the third cycle, I think we got, we got kind of screwed out of a proper bull run thanks to the FTX, Celsius, Voyager, BlockFi's of the world. But we're going to find that out in about 12 to 18 months. But you can just see that there is some type of diminishing returns. Gotcha. But look at this. Cycle one was a 45x. Cycle two, 27, almost 28x. And cycle three, which was not bad, about an 8x. And if we just kind of extrapolate that data, we can see that this is what the prices potentially could or should be on the different time frames based on historical records if we're taking a look at cycle three, two, and one. Actually, mostly cycle three in this one. So on May 20th, at like a 1.1x, it should have been 73,000. Now, around May 20, I think we're at, we were at 70 or 71. Correct me in the comments section. Not too bad. Actually, it's pretty damn close because on the uh, having of uh, April 20, I think we're at 64,000, right? So that means that in three months post having, maybe around 77,000. And then we take a look at six months, which would be October 20th, maybe 99,000. Then I got to jump in this, this green screen. January 20th or nine months later, 238,000. April 20th, 362,000. And then if we look at this, which I must warn everybody, this is kind of ridiculous. I don't think this is actually going to happen. But this was Shamath's prediction. If we, take a, if we do an average of cycles two and three, that would lead us to a one. <laughs> this is not happening. 1.14 million Bitcoin. But the target implied by the last cycle having, which would be like an 8x, you're looking at 497,000. Now let's just be conservative. Let's just say that we don't hit an 8X. Let's just say we double. Actually, yeah, let's just say we double. We double from 64,000. Would everybody be okay with 128,000 Bitcoin? I'm just saying, would everybody be okay with that? And here's the next question for you, and then we'll wrap this up. Where else in roughly 12 to 18 months, can you get into an asset class and have it double in that short amount of time? And would everybody be okay with that? This is why I'm still dollar cost averaging Bitcoin. This is why I feel like my money is on fire in my bank account. And that's why mostly my bank accounts are pretty anemic, but my crypto side is pretty heavy. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing, let me talk about it's time sensitive. If you got to take off, take off. I appreciate your guys' time and stepping by, but that is it.